What's up, Ego Hackers? Welcome to the CSJ Podcast. I'm your host, CS Joseph, and this is Season 24, Episode 1. I realize that I have said previously that I won't be doing uh, this kinds of lectures for YouTube, but I decided that it would be necessary to do so specifically for Season 24. And uh, it's just because I want everybody to have the opportunity to experience season 24 because season 24 is in effect a more accurate, more capable reshoot of season three. And season three is the most viewed season on this channel. And I really felt the need to update it and provide it with the most up-to-date information uh, so that people can come to an understanding of their identity and their life's purpose, which is effectively the entire point of uh, this lecture for today. So without further ado, let's just dive in, shall we? What it's like to be an ESTJ. So ESTJs are known as the judicator type. Uh, their virtue and vice is serenity versus chaos. Uh, so like when they're in their virtue of serenity to an ESTJ, they're constantly trying to create an environment of Zen. Zen is everything to an ESTJ. And, uh, but oftentimes if they don't have the ability to create that Zen, they end up creating a lot of chaos or sometimes they will allow chaos to occur in order to give themselves enough power uh, or decision making power basically to be able to allow have others elect them to bring serenity etc it's kind of an interesting mishmash of how they use their virtue and vice uh, from that standpoint but they're able to go uh, a lot further than that and uh, so basically their identity is their ego their their type uh, and their ego within the four sides of the mind each of the 16 types has four sides of the mind they have their ego which uh, if we're going to be moving the uh, mouse here uh, the ego is this section right here uh, the ESTJ and that's why they're called ESTJs because they have ESTJ ego they have their subconscious which is an INFP so the subconscious is an INFP so ESTJs have an INFP in their head they also have their unconscious which is down here uh, they have an ISTP shadow this is what Carl Jung referred to as the shadow but it's also known as the unconscious side of their mind and then we have the ENFJ super ego which is effectively where their evil exists so they literally have four people living in their heads at all times literally four people that's why people are like well yeah i agree with you but like a side of me is like mm, kind of disagrees with you still because of this you know that's where that comes from it's all about uh, it's all about the four sides of the mind and throughout a person's life they are basically disjointed and as a person goes uh, or disintegrated basically as a person progresses or matures through life they become more and more integrated and uh, like all of the 16 types, ESTJs have eight cognitive functions. And uh, we have extroverted thinking, hero, introverted sensing, uh, parent, extroverted intuition, uh, child, uh, introverted feeling uh, inferior, or an also known as the infant. We have introverted thinking, nemesis, also known as the villain or the ally, extroverted sensing, critic. Uh, introvert intuition trickster and extroverted feeling demon basically and to understand the four sides of the mind all you do is you take their ego and flip it upside down and then boom you have the subconscious take the unconscious and flip it upside down boom you have the super ego and that's the basic structure of a person's mind or soul as it were just remember that every single person literally is everything you have all of the cognitive functions you have the four sides of the mind the difference is is that some functions being in a different order it's a priority system the higher the function the more capability it has so uh, the hero function has like about 100 frames per second parent function is about 75 frames a second uh, expert intuition is about 50 frames a second introverted feeling 20 frames the nemesis function the fifth function is uh, or excuse me inferior function is 25 frames 20 frames for the nemesis 15 frames per second for the critic 10 frames per second for the trickster and five frames per second for the demon function now please be aware that when I start talking about frames per second I don't actually truly mean actual frames per second 
I'm sure there is an actual FPS, but we don't have the technology available to us right now to actually measure that quite yet. Although if I had to venture to guess, the person that would probably discover that and be able to prove it empirically would be none other than Dario Nardi uh, in the near future. If you guys haven't checked out his two books, the first one being The Neuroscience of Personality and his second book, I think it's like uh, it's like the Jungian Diamond or something like that. It's got Diamond in the title. It's about uh, Carl Jung. I highly recommend you check out his books. And no, I'm not being paid to say that whatsoever. Uh, He's just a really cool guy, and I highly respect him uh, within uh, uh, Jungian analytical psychology space, so please check that out. Anyway, so as a result, uh, an ESTJ has their four sides of their minds. Uh, they have their virtue and vice, but how does that all play out within within them? How, how do they end up behaving? What What is it really like? to be an ESTJ? Well, it's, uh, it's very simply answered uh, using the eight cognitive function model. Let's look at the definitions of cognitive functions. And this is usually where people get really hung up. This is where I am probably criticized the most out of anyone within the MBTI blogosphere. Even though what I'm talking about is not Myers-Briggs type indicator, what I'm talking about is the four sides of the mind, also known as four sides dynamics or Jungian analytical psychology. It's got a million names because everyone wants to name it their own thing for some reason. And apparently we can't agree on that, but I mean, it is what it is. I can only do my best, right? So let's look at the definitions of the cognitive functions first and foremost before we actually look at how it fits within the context of an ESTJ. Uh, so cognitive functions are basically also like according to Carl Jung, they're known as cognitive senses. Basically, they are eight senses that every human brain has as a result. And those eight senses are really broken down into eight different awarenesses. It's basically how much a person is aware of a certain spectrum or as spectra, basically, on like a radio. So um, they, uh, they, they're like tuning in to different, these eight different awarenesses, these eight different channels, basically, these eight different spectra. Their brain is like a radio sending and receiving signals constantly within their psyche. And that's, in general, how it works, uh, etc. Uh, but before we could continue, let's, let's look at the, the definitions of the cognitive functions. Um, so uh, the first cognitive function within ESTJs is known as extroverted thinking. Now, I have the definitions written out here to kind of match the subconscious, but since extroverted thinking is the first function in the ESTJ function stack, I'm just going to follow the order. So the definition of extroverted thinking is known as rationale. And ESTJs are extremely rational. They're very process oriented. Everything has a certain order uh, that has to be done. This is what makes them amazing project managers. They're constantly aware of what other people are thinking. They're constantly aware of their own status and reputation. But, you know, according to previous lectures, you could see how there's just so much more detail added to the definitions of the cognitive functions here. Uh, essentially adjectives or synonyms that could be utilized uh, for describing the cognitive functions so that people can have a better understanding of that. Uh, but yeah, they are rational thinkers. They're constantly aware of what everybody else is thinking at all times. They take their reputation very seriously. They take their status very seriously. They're very achievement focused. That's another uh, adjective to um, add here. Um, also, they have uh, inductive reasoning. I don't know why that's not there. And I'm also going to put down uh, achievement uh, for it as well here on the whiteboard. So yeah, ESTJs are all about achievement. That's why they are amazing academics in school. In fact, the entire education system around the world, as well as anything that relating to the humanities or the education uh, process that was handed down by the Greeks that we still utilize to this day, completely benefits ESTJs more than anyone else. ESTJs are also amazing athletes. They're also amazing academics. And in Western society, they uh, like ESTJ men are considered the ideal man. Tom Brady, for example, is an ESTJ, and he's one of the greatest uh, football athletes of all time, and definitely going to be in the Hall of Fame, and he's up there with the likes of Joe Montana, Steve Young, etc., and he's uh, one of the, uh, the greatest football quarterbacks of all time. I'm not exactly a fan of him, but I got to give credit where it's due. Hashtag, go Seahawks. 
Anyway, uh, based on that, uh, expert thinking is all about inductive reasoning. ESTJs are constantly trying to qualify things on a regular basis. They got to qualify everything. So it's like, hey, you know, if it talks like a duck, walks like a duck, sounds like a duck, it's a duck. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's a duck. It just means it's it's like a duck, right? So they're aware of what, what things are like, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. That's rationale. Rationale makes decisions based on qualifications. It makes decisions based on data, makes decisions based on metrics, standards, procedure, rules, uh, uh, what kind of achievement can they get, what kind of credential they can get, how can they increase their status, what does the reputation look like, does this dignify the reputation, or does it reduce their their uh, reputation, etc. Uh, all of those things really matter to ESTJs. I believe George Washington was also an ESTJ. And then they have introverted sensing. Introverted sensing uh, gives the ESTJ in the uh, and it's in the uh, parent slot. Uh, it gives the ESTJ the ability to persevere. It gives them to outlast anyone. Basically, uh, they all have. They're all about endurance. They're all about uh, experience, uh, fortitude, self-discipline, routine. Always putting in the effort. And they 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 have an extremely large attention span. A lot of people don't realize this, but introverted sensing is all about attention span and this is one of the, and especially when it's in a parent uh, slot because the parent slots a bit more skeptical and because of how skeptical they are introverted sensing uh, they end up remembering more than even an introverted sensing hero because they're very precise with their long-term memory so as a result uh, they end up having more accurate memories than anybody else uh, which oftentimes causes uh, TI users, especially STPs, to assume people like ESTJs are the smartest person in the room, and which which can which can actually be true because ESTJs are very academic, they're very professorial. I know plenty of ESTJ athletes who are or living early in their life, and then they start claiming that they live in their life backwards or whatever. And then they become these amazing academic philosophers who are professors at colleges and universities, etc., and giving back to the academic community after finishing their athletic career, for example, uh, or even a project management career in certain cases, or maybe even a lawyer career, uh, or a head of marketing career. There's so many different careers to uh, ESTJs that are out there. Like, or like a big martial arts career, kind of like the guy who's in charge of the Cobra Kai gym in the uh, Karate Kid movie. That guy's an ESTJ. You see what I'm saying? So it, it just it shows you how they're able to go there. But because their skeptical, introverted, sensing parent uh, is as precise to their long memory as it is, they also have the most precise attention span. And this is why the ESTJ archetype is considered by society as the gold standard of attention span, which is why people who are not like ESTJs and lack that introverted, sensing attention span, they are often judged as people who need to be put on ADD, ADHD medication which I find is reprehensible and insanely repulsive of our society to do those people because that's not fair to those people. And it's not fair that society just doesn't understand people and their psyches and they end up diagnosing them with ADD, ADHD when the reality of the situation is they don't have high enough introverted sensing to be able to provide that attention span. And the entire education system is built around the attention span and the academic achievement uh, approaches that benefit an ESTJ. And it doesn't benefit other types like STPs or NTPs or well, uh, and uh, in some cases NFJs. But usually, it's it's STPs and SFPs who end up getting the shortest end of the stick when it comes to the education system, and it's it's pretty terrible. Uh, poor SPs. So ESTJs, you know, speaking about that, their temperament is known as the guardian. Guardians are very stoic individuals. They are all very traditionalist, talking about what is proper or the right way of doing things. ESTJs are also very affiliative, focusing on doing the right thing, all about doing the good thing and the right thing all the time. Kind of like I was watching uh, football earlier today. It was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady as the quarterback versus uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. And Joe Buck, uh, who was the announcer along with Troy Aikman, was talking about how Tom Brady is always that guy who's trying to do the right thing by his teammates. And he's like considered to be the ideal team player and take on the principles of the ideal team player, which according to the book, the ideal team player is humble, hungry, and smart. And the way Joe 
Joe Buck was describing Tom Brady as an ESTJ quarterback on the team, it's like, oh yeah, hey, that guy definitely knows how to lift up his, his guys. He knows how to provide that support, be that support structure, be the, the, the terra firma that his team walks under uh, so that uh, they can be held up. And it's not all about him per se, uh, although some people would probably guess that that's just not the case. But when it comes to the locker room, he's definitely a leader in that way. And that's what ESTJs are. They're also very structural oriented because their interaction style is structure, uh, direct Initiating control. They very. They say what they mean. They uh, they 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 um, mean what they say. Not so many words if necessary. They initiate with people, so they like to loop in other people. They always want to be in the know, so they have to go to other people to find out what's going on, so they can be in the know. Uh, especially because they're like possibly a little bit afraid of what might happen to them in that particular moment. Uh, so they kind of got to make sure that they're in the know so that they could hedge their bet in case they have to because they try to maintain their comfort zone as much as possible with their introverted sensing, which can definitely be a thing. So the next part of an ESTJ is their extrovert intuition child. This is their this is their inner child. This is one of the most sensitive pieces of an ESTJ. And uh, that's right over here, uh, extrovert intuition child. And extrovert intuition child, uh, it's all about their desirability. And uh, desirability or being desirable is everything to an ESTJ. The reason why is because they have ex they have introvert intuition trickster. And introvert intuition is defined by willpower or my choice, my future, my desires, my passion, my wishes, my result, my goal, my objective. And it's all about what a person wants or desires. The thing is an ESTJ doesn't know what they want. They have no clue. The reason why is because introverted sensing is so low in their cognitive functions that they're just not really aware because remember cognitive senses, cognitive functions are levels of awareness. They're just not really aware of what they want. And that could be a serious problem, right? They're just not aware of it. But what they are aware of, they are aware of what other people uh, want. They're all about trying to be as desirable as possible with their extrovert intuition child. They're always aware of what other people want. They're also aware of like pe the consequences of other people's decisions or the consequences of any decisions. And because of that, because they're an SJ type, because they're a guardian type, they always like to try to hedge their bet. This is why ESTJs always err on the side of safety. That's why they prefer traditional beaten path means towards success because from their point of view, they can just outlast everything with their introverted sensing anyway. And as a result of outlasting everything with their introverted sensing, they get to the point where all of a sudden they don't really have to, like it's like, hey, you know, I'll just do the tried and true. I'll just follow the regular beaten path because good things come to those who wait. And that's literally how they live their life. It's all about good things come to those who wait and they're willing to wait. If that means if they have to, you know, invest in safer stocks on the stock market, yeah, it's not as volatile. It'll take a lot longer for them to make any money off of it, but eventually they'll get there and they're willing to wait the extra 10 to 20 years to actually get there because they know their money is safe and they're, they're, they're kind of risk averse. ESCJs are risk averse. And again, that's, that just comes from their awareness of consequences, consequences to their actions and the actions of other people. And they're often trying to warn other people if they feel up to it, if they're in the mood, uh, to warn other people uh, you know, that uh, there could be a bad outcome for them, etc. And usually an ESTJ is not going to make a decision unless they are guaranteed uh, the outcome that they're looking for. Because again, ESTJs, they're very risk averse. They're not always willing to gamble. Uh, especially anything that would potentially harm uh, how they feel about themselves or their reputation. Now, the next one is introverted feeling infant or inferior, and that's the fourth function. Here's the fourth function over here. Uh, the fourth function uh, is the most sensitive function of any uh, ESTJ or any of the 16 types for that matter. And FI or introverted feeling is what is responsible for providing sympathy, uh, morals, weighing, decision making in terms of weighing things out. Uh, it's also about principles, how I feel. Uh, it's all about um, you know, one's sense of merit, basically. And ESTJs are constantly, they're all about merit. They're all about producing, um, you know, merit and being as meritorious as possible. 
uh, which which is pretty cool. And they're very sympathetic. However, they are often afraid that they're not sympathetic enough. They're afraid that they're unworthy. They are afraid that they are a bad person constantly. So what they do is they go out of their way. Like they, they're afraid of not being good enough. So like Tom Brady, he's afraid of not being good enough. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. So he goes out of his way to focus on gathering as much achievements as possible for himself, basically. Uh, because as a result of uh, doing that, he's able to uh, get over how he feels about himself. So he doesn't have to worry about whether or not he's a good person. He just has to keep focusing on achieving. And the more he achieves, the more he esteems himself, the more the nobility he gains for himself as a man. He doesn't have to be as afraid of being a, a bad person and whatnot. Now, Throughout life, though, if he can become courageous, uh, then he could actually enter into his INFP subconscious and become an amazing philosopher. You, I, I tell you the truth, like Tom Brady eventually will become a great teacher, a great philosopher of football, and maybe raise up other men uh, who are going to become greats and then teach them and become a professor of football. Maybe he'll become an announcer one day like Troy Aikman is now. Who knows? But he'll continue, he'll take a more education role as soon as he's finished, uh, as soon as he retires from being a quarterback in the NFL, for example. But again, it's all about how he feels, and oftentimes he's afraid he is not worthy enough, and sometimes he's afraid that he may even become, he may have this superiority complex that's too much. Which, you know, it's true that FI users often do have a superiority complex, but he can combat that with additional achievements. But then again, if it goes too far, it just makes him look like he has a superiority complex, which he is often judged for. So to do that, he has to prove that that's not the case by being sympathetic to other people. And he does this by being generous and by being giving, uh, by showing and expressing gratitude. And this is something all ESTJs need to learn. They need to learn how to show and express gratitude. It's very important for their personal growth. And then uh, the fifth function, so the fourth function is where their wor where fear exists. The third function is where, uh, you know, their childish behavior exists. Responsible behavior is in the parent function, and the hero function is like their main thing, the main thing that they use in their life. But the fifth function is where a person's worry is. And Tom Brady worries all the time that he's stupid, basically. An ESTJ often worries about not being intelligent. This is why they constantly have to surround themselves with other people who have proven track records proven track records of success so that they can dig into their brains you know like the pickaxe right and pick their brains so that they can gain access to that knowledge and that other person said so that they too can be successful so that they too can keep racking up those achievements etc and and increasing their own personal merit through their fi inferior uh, because if they don't they're they're going to constantly worry that they're unintelligent. This is what causes them to go out of their way to always ask other people what everyone else is thinking or to find out what other pe people are thinking and to be able to develop a really good opinion because ESTJs are all about personal beliefs, but they don't always know what the truth is. And sometimes they find themselves believing things that are untrue and they're like, oh crap, that makes me look stupid and I don't want to look stupid in front of other people. Uh, this Another way of saying that is making them look bad, basically, right? Look bad versus look stupid. Uh, oftentimes, uh, American English uses those interchangeably or synonymously, even though they're not, but it, it happens. But the point is, is that Tom Brady, he walks around worried that he's not intelligent. And so, so TI basically is, or introverted thinking is logic or deductive thinking or reductive thinking. It's, it's a filter and it's, it can be very candorous and just telling the truth regardless of how people feel. It separates things. It drills down into the data. It really goes for the trees and not the forest, whereas extroverted thinking hero is all about the forest, etc. And uh, it just, it really only cares about the facts. Facts don't care about your feelings, right? That's that's the TI approach, but he's very worried. Tom Brady as an ESTJ is very worried about uh, not having a good handle on logic, not knowing what the facts are, not knowing what the truth is. So he has to go out of his way to ask other people what they think, or he has to go out of his way to collect data, to collect sources, to collect research, and, and do a ton of research so that he can actually feel confident in what he knows. Otherwise, he walks around, if he doesn't do that, he will walk around with a lack of confidence in what he knows, and that can really inhibit him in his life. 
And then uh, the next one is expert sensing in the credit slot, also known as the uh, grandparent or elder uh, slot. And expert sensing is awareness of reality. It's also a person's personal performance. Performance comes from expert sensing. And uh, it's about, it's awareness of what other people are doing, uh, actions other people are taking. It's all about shared experience or how other people are going to react to things. It's all about seeking attention. Now, Tom Brady, for example, as an ESTJ, he's, he's, he's about being a source of attention. He's about having a great attention span. But there are other out there there are other people out there like his wife, for example, who are constantly seeking attention and seeking his attention. And he gives her his attention, right? Well, she's an expert at sensor and she's trying to get his attention all the time and trying to have shared experiences with him because that tells her that their marriage is real and he's not going to abandon her because an extroverted sensor really needs someone to stick around. And that's why introverted sensors, when they're an introverted sensor being a person who has introverted sensing in the top four functions, they're very loyal people, right? They're extremely loyal people. They do stick around so those extroverted sensors can feel secure in themselves, etc. because introverted sensing is a sense of personal security and if they're sticking around that means the expert sensor can feel secure but when it's in the hands of an ESTJ they can be really really critical of reality I've been criticized so many times for dressing horribly having my shoes untied having food or schmutz or um, cat hair on my clothes uh, wrong colors mismatching ties all that sort of thing and I'm consistently being um, critiqued by my aesthetics on a regular basis because ESTJs have the greatest uh, form of aesthetics as well. And here's another way of extroverted sensing performance as a credit comes out. Oftentimes ESTJs are like, hey, I've endured working in this place for over 10 years and I've performed you know, the best that I can, but you're some little hotshot who's just been here for like maybe a year and you think you're gonna get the promotion before I do? Not a chance. So ESTJs end up being the ones who purport the moniker um, uh, age and treachery always beat youth and skill, for example. So always keep that in mind, you know, and I also maintain the first law of power, according to Robert Greene, who is an INFP, and he wrote, don't outshine the master. I, I think that's especially poignant with ESTJs if you have an ESTJ master, because that extroverted sensing critic is not going to be happy if you encroach on their introverted sensing comfort territory. That's a major, major issue with them. So please be aware of that. Uh, so yeah, they can be really critical. ESTJs can be super mega critical towards how other people look or the aesthetics are because they have super high mega standards. Oftentimes, however, they can't meet their own standard for performance. They can't meet their own standard for aesthetics. And that's one area that you could point out hypocrisy towards an ESTJ. And it's always funny to me when that happens. And then we have introvert intuition trickster, which we slightly talked about already, and it's basically their unawareness of what they want. They don't really know what they want. Don't let an ESTJ buy a car by themselves. They need someone else there with them because they don't know what decision to make for themselves. They need to, they, they prefer to be someone to tell them what to do instead of being asked what they want to do, basically. And it's like if you're going on a date with an ESTJ and say you're like an ENFP and you ask your ESTJ uh, what he wants to do, he's just going to look at you with a quizzical look. And he's like, no, you tell me what you want is what his response is. And that's where that comes from. And then below there's extroverted feeling demon. And extroverted feeling demon to an ESTJ literally is that they just don't really care about how other people feel. And the reason why is because their brain only has so much room for how they feel themselves. From their point of view, they're putting in so much effort to be a good person because they are so afraid of not being a good person. They're so afraid of not being a good person that they go out of their way and put probably four times the amount of effort in trying to be a good person and do the right thing, that they don't have time or even the mental capacity to consider the, the feelings of other people. And from their point of view, why do I have to bother caring about other people's feelings when I'm already going out of my way to make sure I'm a good person and how I feel and what I value? and making sure that my values line up with what's true, that my values line up with what's good, and they're constantly seeking the absolute good. So why do they have to manage the absolute good in other people? That's other people's journeys. This is my journey. And then of course, if someone goes up to the ESTJ and tells them that they're a bad person, 
they're going to get really, really ragey because it's like, really, I'm a bad person. I went to all this effort trying to be a good person. Okay, well, if me going all this way to be a good person is not good enough for you, then I don't care what you value or anything. I'm just going to go, you know, fine. I'm going to go do what everyone values then. Apparently, everyone in this town values uh, snort and coke, so I'm going to go snort coke. Everyone values uh, in this town, uh, you know, to to uh, you know to have illicit sex on a regular basis. Fine. You know, I'm going to go do that now because what's the point? You don't care. I try to do the good thing for you on a consistent basis, but apparently you still find me unworthy. You still find me not good enough. So why am I going to bother being a good person anymore? And this is one of the biggest struggles of the ESTJs that they end up having to deal with. So these are the eight cognitive functions within an ESTJ. But let's look at the growth of cognitive functions a little bit. So I'm going to I'm actually going to adjust the screen here so you guys can see everything and just make myself disappear. But right here, if you notice, you have the hero and the warrior. So your hero function at 100 frames a second starts out as a hero. And over time, it's so as a result, it starts out as irresponsible. And then over time, it grows to be responsible. So a person's personal responsibility literally comes into the warrior. And for an ESTJ, that's the warrior extroverted thinking. And warrior extroverted thinking means that they're using proper inductive reasoning. They're doing the proper research. They're looking at all of the data. They're asking other people their opinions. They're making sure that their opinion matches the facts. They're making sure that they're focusing on achievements that are actually valuable instead of achievements that are worthless or potentially worthless. A heroic uh, rationale, while it can still work, it's very irresponsible. And they end up making decisions based on wrong data. They didn't take the time to survey other people, for example. They didn't take the time to do the research. And it's like they're constantly a rough draft instead of a finished final paper. And that's what expert thinking hero looks like versus expert thinking warrior. Then you have introverted sensing teenager. And this is like the gullible versus a uh, skeptical approach where basically an introverted sensing teenager is where the ESTJ can get to a point where they are, um, where they are very, um, uh, they can become loyal to the wrong things, the, law, the wrong belief systems, the wrong spirituality, the, the, wrong, uh, the wrong person, the wrong system, the wrong person, place, or thing, the wrong rules. That's a big one. The wrong laws. Wow, that's really painful. And introverted sensing teenager, when it's at that point, they become very gullible and open to things that they shouldn't be loyal to. But when they become skeptical over time because they've been burned so much in their life and they remember all the times that they've been burned, their introverted sensing becomes more skeptical. It becomes a responsible parent. And as a result, they're able to have an amazing sharp memory uh, that will ultimately protect them from negative consequences. And then the next one, we have the inner child, the precocious child versus the divine child, uh, and uh, which is really the difference between tyranny and divinity. So think about a high chair uh, child, the, the high chair tyrant, basically like a king sitting on a high chair because it's just a child king. Expert intuition child is like, hey, everyone has to want me. Everyone's got to worship me in this particular moment. I'm, I'm the most important thing and I'm going to be a tyrant because I'm not going to allow anyone else around me to be as desirable as me. So you could think about like a young hotshot Tom Brady, whereas now he's a lot older and uh, his divinity is showing instead of him being a tyrant on the football field he's actually becoming uh you know someone who is more divine and allowing other people to take the spotlight it's not about him anymore it's about other people and every estj has to take on this lesson uh, going beyond that then we have introverted feeling uh, inferior also known as the infant versus the noble and this is like where uh, where they start out very infantile, but then eventually they can become noble, like royalty. And it really comes down to fear versus courage. Over time, or like starting out in life, an ESTJ is very afraid that they're not very worthy about themselves, that they're not good enough, basically. And they're always afraid of that. But after, after a while, after they've racked up achievements, after they realize that their worthiness is not necessarily placed on achievements as much as it is actually about their merit and their principles and their wisdom that they've collected throughout their life, they start to be very courageous and uh, they start to do things that they would have never have done before and having principles that they never would have had before or be open to beliefs that they never would have done before. For example, my ESTJ former coworker got really into Reiki when he turned 50. 
when he was younger, he would have never even considered Reiki as a, as a remote concrete thing for him to pay any attention to because he is concrete. ESTJs oftentimes appear to be abstract because their extrovert intuition child is um, optimistic uh, instead of being pessimistic like in the parent slot or the inferior slot. If you want to learn more about optimistic or pessimistic functions, I highly recommend you watch the season 16 playlist on the YouTube channel. You can find that csjoseph.life forward slash social and click on YouTube and you can learn uh, and then go to playlist, go to season 16. You can learn a lot more about that, right? Okay, but uh, anyway, over time, they just shed their fear of being a good person. They know they're a good person and they allow, they become courageous with their sympathy, showing sympathy to people that they never would have shown sympathy to before. For example, the, down, the poor and downtrodden earlier in their life and they're afraid that they were not worthy enough, they look at those people and be like, well, why aren't you working as hard as I am? Why aren't you achieving like I am? You're just sitting there on the side of the street. You're literally not doing anything. But later in life, they realize that that's not what life is all about. And then as a result, they end up showing a lot more sympathy towards those people because they're not afraid within them all themselves of their own worthiness. They realize that worthiness is not actually tacked on to achievements. It's on merits. It's on one's own personal principles and values and their own morals that they have collected as a result of gaining wisdom in their life. And they realize that wisdom is the key to worthiness. And as a result, they realize that these people, it's not that they're these poor people on the side of the street that say it's not that they're poor. It's not that they're necessarily choosing the poor. It's just that, oh, he's just uneducated or, oh, she's just ignorant. They don't actually know. So then the ESTJ becomes less judgmental and then is more sympathetic towards those people, is willing to help those people, is willing to improve those people, not like Tom Brady helping other people on his new football team to try to build them up. And it's not about his spotlight. It's not about his worthiness. It's about encouraging and building up worthiness in other people, which is absolutely fantastic when it happens. And then we have uncertainty versus certainty, which comes from the villain or ally function. So the nemesis function, the fifth function, starts out as a villain. It exists to challenge the hero, and that's constantly with that personal worry, that personal uncertainty that I might not really know what I'm talking about. And eventually, as, as, as time goes on in their life, as they get older, they become very certain. They become very certain with what they know to the point where the ESTJ has the confidence to be able to defend what they know, no matter what. And this is, this is very normal. And that's when their introverted thinking becomes an ally instead of a villain because they're confident with what they know. They've done all the research. They have all of the experience. They've gained the wisdom. They suffered so much and endured so much and persevered so much in their life that they've been able to go even further than that, right? And it's absolutely fantastic when, they're actually, when they actually pull this off. And then they're able to live their life in certainty. Whereas before, when they were younger, they weren't able to live their life in certainty. And then you have the expert sensing critic, which is also known as the senile elder or the grandparent. And the critic function is where a person really gains uh, wisdom the most in their life. And it's why it's called the ignorant function versus the wise. And it starts out very ignorant. Oftentimes you see ESTJs cr uh, criticizing other people on their performance or criticizing themselves on their own personal performance, or they're criticizing other people on their aesthetics or how they're dressed, etc. But they do it from a very ignorant standpoint. Standpoint. They don't have enough experience to realize that they too themselves are not performing at peak because they haven't failed enough. They haven't trialed in the air enough. They haven't practiced enough to be able to get themselves to a higher standard of performance themselves. So they do this from a very ignorant point of view. Whereas when it's from a, a wise standpoint, they become like a grandparent, right? And a grandparent's all about taking care of the grandchild, etc. The grandchild in this case would be the child function, which would be like being desirable, right? And not being a tyrant about it. So they've shed their ignorance and they're a lot wiser. And as a result, it's, it's about building other people's performance. It's about giving other people a good experience. It's about making other people comfortable, not necessarily their own selves, but their own comfort zone. If the ESTJ's comfort zone is in the spotlight, if the ESTJ's comfort zone is all about getting their achievements and not other people's achievements, if the ESTJ's comfort zone is all about making themselves desirable over allowing other people to be desirable or be in the spotlight, or if the ESTJ is all about their comfort zone being focusing on you know, making themselves worthy at all times, well, the extroverted sensing grandparent is going to let the, the next generation, the, ne the children basically, rise 
rise up to that point and be desirable and wanted and uh, gain the status and better reputation and 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 build up worthiness and 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 uh, and values and principles in the next generation, etc. And the ESTJ does this. This is why they're like that athlete-ish or high performer in the beginning of their life, but then the later in their life they become this this um, this Greek philosopher who teaches other people who professes a certain opinion or belief based on philosophy or principle that they've developed throughout their life. It's absolutely fantastic. And then uh, there's the unaware versus the mastery, which I'll have to remove myself for us to look at right here. And uh, that is down here, the trickster or master function. Yes, an ESTJ, they just never know what they want. They're completely unaware of what they want. They think they know what they want, but they're just not really aware of it. But then eventually throughout their life, after they've integrated all the four sides of their mind, they become a master of what they actually want. And the one thing they actually truly do want in their life, they finally discover what that is and they, and they hammer it. And they hammer it for the benefit of mankind, for, for their fellow man. They, they become the embodiment of love their neighbor as themselves because they use their willpower, their choice, their future, their passion. The ESTJ finally discovers their passion and is able to master their one passion in life and hammer it with as much as possible, right? And that's how they go about doing it. And then at the bottom, you have the demon or the angel for expert feeling, how other people feel, what other people value. And over time, the ESTJ has had a huge amount of hatred in this area. Why? Well, they become, uh, they have hatred because, uh, which, which is pretty sad. The reason why is because there are many people in their life that told them that they are unworthy. Maybe it was their father. Maybe it was their mother. Maybe it was an uncle. Maybe it was a teacher. Uh, maybe it was a mentor of some kind. Maybe it was a pastor. Uh, who knows? But someone somewhere, maybe it was a woman who abandoned them or didn't want them. But someone somewhere, it was like with Tom Brady, someone told him that he was unworthy. And because of that, and he didn't make the cut, he wasn't good enough he ended up developing hatred for them. But after he's been through his entire life and gotten to the point where he's realized that, you know, I can endure anything. I have all the experience necessary. I know I am worthy enough. I, not only do I have the achievements to back it up, but I also have my own morals. I have my own values. I have my own merit that definitely outweighs anything else. And I know I'm worthy. And honestly, those people that were telling me that I wasn't good enough in those days, they were right. I really wasn't good enough. I really wasn't. I, they knew what I didn't because I was ignorant. They knew that I needed to practice. They needed. I, they knew that I needed to put in the effort and to put in the time, right? And then as a result of that, he, Tom Brady, in this example, would end up loving. He would end up loving uh, those uh, in his, um, you know, in his life who told him that he was unworthy, because it was just those people that were basically showing him love, telling him, hey man, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but rather in sober judgment so that you can actually become a top performer, uh, so that you can become worthy, so that everyone would want you and you can gain a better status and reputation because you are a high achiever. But until you do that, uh, so then he was just, he blamed them for being overly critical towards them and hate them. But then later in his life, he's like, you know what? Those people are actually right. They're trying to help me. So I end up loving them for who they actually are instead of for what I want them to be, basically. So anyway, folks, this in general is what it is like to be an ESTJ. And this encompasses their human nature. This is ultimately their specific identity. And that brings me to the final point, which is what is the life purpose of an ESTJ? And that is to leave a legacy of order behind, right? So Tom Brady, for example, he's going to leave a legacy of a specific process, a principle or system when it comes to being a quarterback in the NFL and what that's like so that other players in the NFL can learn from him and become great quarterbacks themselves because they followed the Brady system or the Brady process or the Brady principle, etc. That's their purpose in life. It is to leave behind a legacy of order, a legacy where they were the ones 
leading the charge against bringing order to chaos and bringing serenity to places that serenity did not exist. And for example, Tom Brady is doing that right now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There was chaos before, but he's brought, he's come in, he's bringing order to that football team basically. And again, folks, I'm not exactly a fan of Tom Brady. Don't get me wrong. I'm just giving credit where it's due here. And then as a result, he's bringing, with, through his expert sensing critic, through his elder, for, ex, for example, uh, he's been able to improve the future with his extroverted intuition child, the future of the team, and help them become high achievers, with just like him, with his expert thinking hero, and make them a better football team as a result. This is an example, a direct example of how uh, you know this. There's this legacy uh, that um, that an ESTJ can bring, a legacy of order, folks. So that's pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, that concludes uh, episode, uh, season 24, episode one here on the CSJ podcast. Uh, I'm CS Joseph, and uh, thank you for watching and/or listening, and I'll see you guys tonight.